Thanks for staying with us. Now, a leader is someone who can see how things can be improved and who rallies people to move towards that better vision. Leaders can work towards making their vision a reality while putting people first. Just being able to motivate people isn't enough, or occupying an office doesn't make you a leader. Leaders need to be empathetic and connect with the people to be successful. Now, coming off of the back of this definition, how should we elect um, our leaders as we move towards 2023? What are the qualities of our leaders that we must look out for? What qualities must they possess? You know, for the current realities, now this is in emphasizing the current realities of Nigeria to move our nation forward. What kind of qualities should these leaders possess? Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayshowAfrica1 with the hashtag Wayshow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 Okay, so Lami, I'm going to bring in um, Taiwa Akilami very soon, right? So um, I just wanted to hear your thoughts because you know what? 2015, we were all about, oh, this man's personality, he has, a, he has a mantra, no to corruption and all of that. So I was part of them, so I won't put my, I won't um, excuse myself. We were part of the people that were carried away by, oh, no, he will be the man for the job, to do the job and all of that. So I am just wondering, you know, um, when I heard this saying that leaders are, it's not about the office, but the person, I thought about it again. I said, hmm, this is very interesting. Is it possible that we have been electing leaders based on uh, certain qualities that we shouldn't have been, you know, um, um, electing them on? You know, have we been making that mistake all these years? And if at all we have been making that mistake, how can we even correct it? But in your assessment, right, what is leadership to you? Is it the office or the person? And if it's the person, what are the kind of qualities that we should be looking out for in terms of who to elect as leaders in, in this, our current Nigeria? I don't know where you want me to start. Which question do you want me to answer? <laughs> Just start from anywhere. <laughs> I think we've had this discussion before. And I remember saying that leaders in Nigeria, we don't build leaders. They just emerge. Hmm. You know, there's no tutelage. There's no pathway for leadership. We don't, even in schools, I don't think that the, a lot of school concentrate on teaching what leadership is. So, you know, part of the political offices are compensations. You find out, oh, Omawani has been in the party and all that. Give him this ticket and all that. So just, they see it more as a reward system, mm -hmm. not actually as a vision. You know, they don't, they don't appoint people or, you know, uh, nominate people who actually have vision. And another problem we have in Nigeria is we are always left with rather no choice. Hmm. You know, they just give you two visionless people. How do you want to choose from the, you know, ah. two visionless people? Mm -hmm. So I think what we should be looking now, and, and I'm particularly scared about 2023, because for me, I have not seen anybody that I think I would endorse coming out to say I want to take, you know, a risk with this uh, position. So it's all going to go back to, the, you know, the recycled leaders. So I'm really, really scared because I don't know what would happen in 2023. Do I see us? Because we are not doing anything as far as I'm concerned. That's my personal opinion. I'm not sure we're doing a strategy to use. I don't, I'm not sure we're doing enough to see that. Because 2023 is just around the corner. Mm. In another two years, yes, we'll be at the election cycle. You know, would have probably elected, you know, the president by this time, two years time. So what are we doing about it? We need to look out for somebody who is dispassionate. Because for me, I think most of our leaders are completely disconnected from humanity. Mm. How would you, how would you in your heart, Assuming that you are, a, you are human, how would you, in your heart, appropriate money that is meant for over 20 million people in your state, mm -hmm. cut away that money that is appropriated for probably um, health, for health care? You don't pay teachers, you don't pay healthcare workers, and you cut away that money, ship it abroad, go and buy a very big house and lock it and come back to Nigeria. Do you think that person is insane? Hmm. Why, why do you need that for? So I think 
a number of our leaders are completely disconnected from humanity. So I have, what I have been trying to question, the question I've always been you know, asking myself is, is it a black thing? Are we just wicked people? Are we just completely dehumanized? Or is it a race thing? Is it a Nigerian thing? Hmm. Or what happens when they get back? Does, is, this, is there something that radically changes them? You know, you know, it's interesting what you are saying. You know, it just brings to my mind, you know, um, 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 late Nelson Mandela, right? Do you know how scary this picture that you have painted, you know, is looking in my mind? It means that we do not even, we've never had, maybe just very few, but we've never had real leaders. Because if you are a leader, right, a leader, you must be a people person. To be compassionate. Named, yes, you must be extremely Ooh, compassionate. Is it's been missing for a very long time. It's, it's been missing for a very long time. You must be a very compassionate person where you put other people first. You make sure that, you know what, you're thinking about the next person, right? You're thinking about the next person. That's for me, that's leadership. I suppose Problem just you... Solving. Yes, I suppose you're just saying that you have occupied a, a, a seat. And that's what makes you a leader. No. So the fact that you are sitting on the chair of the president does not make you a leader, right? You're just occupying a position. And this is what we have seen going all over and over again, happening countless times. You know, so I am just thinking in my head, right? So where do we even start to, um, where do we even start from? You know, where do we start from, you know, in terms of who we need to start to elect? Because 2023, like you rightly said, I haven't even seen a leader. I have seen people that want to occupy office. Do you understand? But I haven't seen a leader. I don't know if we have um, Taiwa Kilami there yet. Um, I'm here. Okay, so Ty Taiwa Kilami is a social development lawyer, co-founder, power parenting company, um, parents' rights to social protection advocate and publisher. Taiwa Akilami is arguably Africa's foremost child pro uh, protection thinker and um, practitioner, being the founder and the principal of Taiwa Akilami Child Protection Academy. His unique philosophy and teachings on family strengthening um, child protection and related matters have been well received in over 133 countries. Akilami is also a prolific writer, poet, and blogger, and he's joined us live from Dallas. Thank you so much, Taiwa Kilami, for joining us. Taiwa, are you there? I'm here. Okay, all right, so Taiwa. All right, all right, so you heard, did you, I mean, I don't know how much of the, the banter Lamy and I had that you heard. Um, but as we are planning towards 2023, right, it is important that we talk about the important things, you know, the things that will drive decision making in terms of who we eventually yes. vote for and elect as leaders in different um, positions, be it local government, um, Senate, um, House of Rep, you know, House of Representatives, whatever it is that we're, we're electing, whoever it is that we're electing, it is important we drive conversations that would get people thinking before they put their thumb on that ballot sheet. So in your assessment yes. about, you know, leadership, right? We are seeing that it's a problem in Africa that leadership is more about just the office, not so much. We don't really consider the person, right, of that, the person that is occupying that seat. It's more of, let me just go and occupy that seat, and that's what makes me a leader. And we're seeing that this is a big issue that we need to address. So, but in your general assessment, what do you think about the leadership in Nigeria? Because we are narrowing it to Nigeria, and want to be able to find unique qualities that we can now use to say, you know what, these are the people that we want to bring into power 2023. Okay, um, thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure to be with you again. I think it's my fourth or fifth missionary journey on your program. Uh, I appreciate the invitation. Now, let me start by saying, when I was advertising this program, I put out a poster. And what I was asking is, has Nigeria ever been blessed with a leader hmm. or we have been at cost with political office holders masquerading as leaders? I think... My sad assessment is that I do not think we have ever been blessed by leaders who are altruistic, who are visionary, who see the end from the beginning, 
Maybe in a particular degree, we could say that those who wrestled power, well, I don't want to call it wrestling of power because they didn't wrestle power. They are tea parties. They, they had some in Nigeria, some in Britain. Yes, some in Britain. And at the end of the day, they uh, negotiated what they call the independence of Nigeria. As far as I'm concerned, it was a contract, you know, and parties understood what, what was the need for each party mm -hmm. and they signed that contract. And, and so between then and now, the situation has grown from bad to worse. It's like we are getting it worse by the day. I think what should have happened is that it should have, it should have been better. But as it is today, Nigeria has not been blessed in the degree of where of where countries like India, countries like Singapore, countries like in latter histories, countries like Rwanda, countries like Ghana have been blessed with with leaders who are visionary, who put themselves who put themselves who do not put themselves first. I think we have not been blessed with those kind of leaders because leadership number one requires ability to teach vision and keep inspiration alive. And one of the biggest ways or the most way, best way to keep his vision alive is to be able to lead by example, is to put yourself, is to put yourself forward as the sacrificial lamb in the affairs of state. The challenge today is that I'm not sure that is what we have. Since that is not what we have, what do we then have? We now have people who hold political offices for personal gains masquerading as leaders. Saying a whole lot of things, you know, there was a there was a video that was released recently. Lolly Euro. So that is the story of Nigeria. You are my sugar. You are my honey. Lolly Euro. I will I will make Nigeria better for you. Lolly Euro. Do you remember this song? Come join us. Come with us. We are on our way. Education for all by the year two. Education was going to be for all, but what do we have today? 13.5 million Nigerian children that are out of school, that don't have access to education. Mm -hmm. That's what we are dealing with. I think that, I think that to a very large extent, I do not think it may be a sad statement to make, it may be a sweeping statement to make that we have never had people that have the best interest of our people at heart. Now, this is the issue. You may think that what about the Awolo was the Namdi Azikwe is the all of all of those guys, Aminu Kano and all of them. The truth of the matter is that the true test of success is found in your success. When you now have a type of success that is not repeatable, Lin Kuan Yu is no more. Since when has he handed over? Singapore has remained, remained on the progressive stage. Now, uh, 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 Mandela is no more. There's a level of progress that you can see in, in South, South Africa. Africa. Now, uh, 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 um, Gandhi is no more. You can see the level of progress. Today, Nigeria has overtaken India in the highest number of poor people. Nigeria has overtaken India in the highest number of under five deaths. So that's what we are dealing with. So if they were actually successful, how come they were not able to send the back to those who were coming behind them? I think that's a tragedy of the Nigerian story. And it requires that we begin to take a look at who we have been, what we have been able to do, or where we go from here. Hmm. Absolutely. Lami, you want to come in okay, here? Okay, um, tell you, yes. So the only question I have at this time is, why is it so? Why have we been, why has Nigeria been electing the wrong people for the past 60 years? For every election cycle, why, what is the problem? Well, I think that problem begins from uh, the the people, the people of Nigeria. You know, at the end of the day, the people we elect and we put in political office are people who are amongst us. Hmm. Now, the foundation of what we understand as as um, as uh, politics, as what we understand as political leadership, is shaky. Why is it shaky? It is because from the beginning there has been a problem with interpretation of what it means to be, be a, a leader. Is it yeah. What it means to hold political office mm -hmm. for who? Now, we have failed to understand that more important than, than the political office is where it is being held, for who is being held, and, and, and um, what you have in mind as legacy when you hold such office. That's the major problem that we are dealing with. 
So until we go back to the drawing board, we begin to we begin to embark on the level of political education. Let me give you a quick example. First World War was headed by 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 a, con a country called Germany. Second World War was headed by a country called Germany by two leaders who were elected. Now, after the Second World War experience, what did Germany do? Germany established a political education uh, fund where everybody can draw from, irrespective of what you are discussing. You don't have to be in the good book of the of the of the party in power. Once you have a political education commitment and you are and you and, and you put the proposal forward, you are funded by the state. Hmm. That is why Green Party was popular, was able to draw funds funding in, in, in Germany, even when that whole idea of of uh, of uh, global warming and all of that was not popular. So the point therefore is that. Go ahead. Oh, are we losing Taiwo? Lami, can you hear me? Okay, I think we're having trouble. Yes, I can. Okay, I think we're having trouble with Taiwo. Taiwo, are you here now? Okay. All right, so let me take a comment, um, Lami. Um, this is from Rafael Akori from Zaria. He says... We as a nation must make political offices less lucrative and turn all legislative chambers to a part-time job. Then good leaders will emerge effortlessly in the country. I think I agree. All right. Taiwa Kilami, are you there? I'm here. All right. So you were talking about the two nations in Germany. What I'm also saying is that... So take up... You know, people go out to say... Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, people go out to say that during an election, those who collect 200 naira, 500 naira, they are selling their conscience by collecting that money. I sit to dis I, I beg to disagree. They did not sell their conscience the day they collected that money. Their conscience have been compromised by the level of poverty in which they are, they, 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 they are drowned in. It is impossible for a people whose existence is abused for them to feel that they have a level of dignity and honor on the day of election. So that whole idea needs to be reviewed. We need to take another look at it critically. As a third world country, we need to sit and ask ourselves the critical question. What, is it, what can really work for a third world country? What do we really need to do? Is it democracy? If it is democracy, what kind of democracy? You see, as Mr. Lakunation has argued many years ago, that, you see, when you talk about the term, the, the tomb of a mega in Nigeria is equal to the tomb of, of, of a CEO. How can it be? When you come to the United States of America, even a man who, who is a truck driver understands politics to, the, to know that whether he's a Democrat or he's a Republican or he's an independent or he's neutral. That is not the case in Nigeria. When the majority of our population are living in abject poverty and you want them to go to the poll and be pressing tomb, that thumb is useless to the extent that the head carrying the thumb does not know what is pressing. Hmm. Wow. Am I still, am I still, are you still with me? Yes, we can hear you. Hmm. You can hear me. So we, can, right, go on. We, we can hear you. You know what? The, the one you just said now is hitting home. Let us go on a very short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.